Hello and welcome to India's World. Indian relief and rescue operation in Nepal began within four hours of a series of devastating earthquakes hitting that country. There's been a remarkable mobilization of the Indian Air Force, the Indian Army and the National Disaster Relief Force to provide rescue and relief in Nepal. Field hospitals have been set up by the Army and medical teams have been sent to relatively remote areas. Indian Air Force aircraft have been flying sorties to Nepal with supplies and evacuating people. These operations with military precision have continued at a relentless pace. Although help has been pouring into Nepal from all over the world, the Indian relief effort remains incomparable. In the midst of the rescue operations in Nepal, there have been a series of media commentaries, especially in the Western press, suggesting that Indian and Chinese aid have a hidden political agenda, that the two neighbors of Nepal are jockeying for influence in that country. Statements from Nepali leaders bracketing India's unprecedented disaster response with that of other countries, especially China, have also not helped. To discuss the geopolitics of disaster relief in Nepal, we have with us a very distinguished panel of experts. Ambassador Rakesh Sooth, he's been India's ambassador to Afghanistan and Nepal, and, and permanent representative to the Conference of, on Disarmament in Geneva. He was also the deputy chief of mission in India's embassy in Washington, D.C. We have Mr. D.P. Tripathi, he's general secretary and chief spokesman of the Nationalist Congress Party, NCP. He's also a member of parliament in the Rajya Sabha. He knows Nepal well, and the Nepalese people know him well. He played a crucial role in bringing the Maoist insurgents into the democratic process. And we have with us Ambassador Jain Prasad. He's been India's ambassador to Algeria, Afghanistan, and Nepal, and has also been India's permanent representative to the Conference on Disarmament in Geneva. So I welcome you, gentlemen, to this discussion. Uh, ambassador Sood, let me begin with you. What credence should one give to the media uh, observation that India and China are mixing aid, uh, earthquake aid in Nepal, with attempts to gain increased strategic influence in that country? I think too much is being made out of these speculative stories that have appeared in, as you said, Western media and even perhaps a section of Indian media. I think the response, Indian response to this disaster in Nepal was first and foremost a humanitarian response and I don't think we have seen any statements or any indication that we are looking at it at as anything other than a purely humanitarian response in a country with which we have very, very strong relationships, both in terms of history and geography. Uh, DPT, uh, do you think that it is wrong for both India and China, if they are indeed doing so, to see disaster relief to Nepal as also a part of their image building in that country? No, 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 no. Any country which is trying image building or playing politics, geopolitics or whatever you call it, is fundamentally wrong. I entirely agree with Ambassador Sood that our response has been completely humanitarian. And India, because of certain um, um, uh, traditional uh, relationships uh, with Nepal, uh, acted very fast, as you have said. And this response has been totally to help uh, the Nepalese people uh, because of this devastating earthquake. And the relief and rescue operations are still continuing and will continue in months to come because the, 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 the damage has been unprecedented. It is not merely that the earthquakes and aftershocks are um, uh, worst. Uh, that has happened to Nepal, and as the chief of the army staff is saying, that the casualties uh, would go beyond uh, 15,000. So you can imagine the devastation. And therefore, the quick and immediate response of uh, India through all its forces for disaster management has been praiseworthy, and the Nepalese people have appreciated it. And there is no politics in this. Okay, Ambassador, uh, although both of you are not saying anything about China, but I'll leave it at that. Ambassador uh, Jain Prasad, uh, do you think geopolitics has a role uh, in Nepal government asking uh, Indian rescue teams not to work in some other border districts like uh, a district called Rasuwa, which, is, which borders Tibet, or saying that don't do any rescue operation that might involve overflying Chinese territory? Chinese haven't said that, the Nepalese are saying that. Why is Nepal given two different regions, one to China, another to, to India? Now, if there are, there are border districts where Indian help is needed and uh, capabilities are on the ground, why is Nepal saying don't go there? No, there is uh, no problem in uh, the Nepalese government deciding 
which teams would go where. I mean, it is their sovereign right to decide. What is important in this discussion is forget about uh, misdirected elements in the Kathmandu Valley trying to suggest something or Western journalists trying to suggest something. The Chinese are not suggesting it. The Chinese in Beijing and in Kathmandu are highly appreciative of the Indian effort. And the people of Nepal are appreciative of the Indian effort. And we have a natural USP. We have strategically changed from the aero bridge idea to the land bridge idea. From the third day onward, first on the third day, 60 trucks went to Nepal. The following day, 100 trucks went to Nepal carrying relief supplies. So obviously, we would take care of the mid hills. And if the Chinese are contiguous to Raswa, they are you know, they have land communications over there. And if they are helping one or two districts in the hills to which they are proximate, there is no issue there. And the Indian and the Chinese embassies in Kathmandu are very well coordinated with each other, as you can see from the press reports. All right. In so, fact, I would add yeah. something to what uh, Jayan said, that the Chinese spokesperson is on record as having said that we have seen the Indian assistance coming in and we would like to coordinate in order to make sure that uh, the Chinese assistance which is going in, which is obviously for reasons of distance, for reasons of um, uh, differences in terms of language, culture, etc., is relatively less compared to the magnitude of Indian uh, response. And they've said that we would like to coordinate with the yeah, Indians so in what, this regard. So what you're you saying, um, what all of you are saying, is that there's no geopolitics involved? Now, if that is the case, if that is the case, why is it that Nepal has refused a rescue team from Taiwan? They were all ready to come. They were told, don't come. We're going to rely on our neighbors. Now, if that is really the case, then how is Nepal accepting uh, aid from Europe and from America? They're not immediate neighbors. This may be out of sensitivity to Chinese concerns. But and Russia is not, but and, not, and sometimes, not allowing Indians to the border districts is not out of Chinese sense. Well, I think the Indian, Indian border districts or the districts of Nepal that border India, where India has easier in terms of uh, communication and connectivity, would be the districts of Tarai straight up going into the Kathmandu Valley, which is perhaps no, I was the talking of the districts affected. bordering Tibet where Indians were not allowed initially. Now, I don't know where they've been allowed since then. Well, those districts, as Jan said, are in any case closer to the... Have so there is, there is no politics there, but in, Ta in the case of Taiwan, refusing Taiwan's uh, help, is there is politics. There is politics on the part of Nepali sensitivity to China. Yeah, okay. So not in terms of Nepali, ne Nepal trying to play geopolitics at this stage. And mind you, I would like to add one more thing here. Yeah. What we are seeing right now is just the first aftermath of humanitarian assistance, there is going to be a long haul Absolutely. ahead. Absolutely. We're going to discuss which that. Which is going to cost billions of dollars yeah, we're, in we're, terms we're, of reconstruction. We're going yeah. to discuss that, but we need, to, DPT, I'll come to you. We need to take a break at this point. We'll continue with this interesting discussion in a bit. Don't go away. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're discussing charity and geopolitics in Nepal's earthquake relief. DPD wanted to say something before I rudely interrupted you. No, I just wanted to add to what uh, Ambassador Jain Prasad and Ambassador Sood have said about China. See, China in this disaster management, rescue and relief is playing a role of a very good neighbor to Nepal. And as Ambassador Jain Prasad has said, the not merely embassies, but the governments are coordinating all these relief operations in Nepal. And there is no difference of opinion. Okay. Of course, the districts which are closer to China, Chinese yeah. border, their, their help can reach quickly. And no, it, that, is, it, no, it should be welcome. Accepted. That point's be welcome. been made. That ah. point's been made. That, that's uh, what I'm saying. Yeah. So the, the, there should not be a, 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 a political element yeah. which is being pointed out uh, in the Western media and parts of Indian media, that uh, there is a strategic image building and influence building through the aid, okay. uh, rescue and rehabilitation. Okay. Okay. It is not uh, correct. Uh, Jayanth, um, mm -hmm. what is your assessment of the aid being provided by India and how does it compare with what China is doing? No, uh, you know, Nepal is a country which is south of the Himalayas. And uh, the Mount Everest is the border between uh, Nepal and China. So obviously the Chinese are acutely conscious that whether it is supply of essential commodities, starting for a, from a very simple commodity like salt, 
right up to petroleum products. The Chinese are simply not in a position to supply all this. So the Chinese know very well that without India's sustenance and support, Nepal's economic survival, especially at a time when it is faced with a huge humanitarian crisis, is simply impossible. So I wouldn't even get into this comparison. Okay. So it's a wrong because comparison. I would, I would absolutely incorrect comparison because the scale of our operations are entirely different. Actually, India has taken this opportunity, uh, and our leadership has, for being the team builder and uh, 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 player involving others. Look at what uh, uh, Prime Minister Mr. Modi said when President Ashraf Ghani was visiting. In the name not just of Afghanistan and India, he spoke in the name of SARC countries and the world when he assured the Nepali people that as they rebuilt their lives and reconstructed their homes and heritage, India would stand by okay. their side. Okay. Uh, 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 if geopolitics is not mixed up with earthquake relief, which is what you gentlemen are saying, then why does it seem that the that some sections of uh, the Nepalese government uh, uh, are hesitant in accepting the, the kind of role India is playing? Why is it that each time they talk about uh, aid coming to Nepal, they will say, yes, aid is coming from India, unprecedented amount, but immediately talk about China and other countries, almost giving the impression they want to show that it's a multilateral uh, thing that's happening. I think for this you have to go back into the history of Nepali politics. But I think at, at the ground level, if you see now the Nepal army, for example, is coordinating in a very major way. And if you see the statements that have come out from the Nepal army, their spokesperson, the Nepal army chief, they have talked absolutely in unstinting terms about the kind of assistance that India is providing. I, I don't doubt, Not I don't doubt you on that at all. I'm talking the political leadership. If you talk to the people, they've got very close emotional links uh, with India. I'm talking of sections of the political leadership. Sections of the political yeah, absolutely. leadership. I don't think the government of Nepal has said anything like this. I don't think the president of Nepal or the prime minister of Nepal have made any of these kind of statements. I don't want to go into who, who I could so therefore, actually say that some representatives of the government of Nepal have done this, but, but leave that aside. That's why I said there has been a degree of polarization in Nepali politics over decades. And this is not a recent phenomenon. Mm -hmm. We know that the phenomenon of anti-Indianism does exist in sections yep. of Nepali society. And it has grown in some ways over decades. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, DPT, if this is, the, this is the situation, then does this not point to the limits to which India can influence the hearts and minds of the political leaders of Nepal? Because you end up hitting this wall, uh, uh, anti-India wall with some of them. See, that element which Ambassador Sood has pointed out has been there, but it is from the Kathmandu Valley actually that anti-Indianism is there. But by and large, if you look at Nepali politics and their political leadership, it has not been uh, anti-India. Even the present government, while facing this devastating earthquake and all the difficulties, taking help from India, taking assistance, is not making any adverse comments. And I don't uh, think any important political leader of Nepal, to the best of my memory, has made any anti-India statement. That's very good that they, they, are, they are not making anti-India statement. But equally, uh, my impression is they are not seizing this opportunity hmm. to really solidify the sentiment that Prime Minister Modi has been uh, expressing, not only in his uh, radio talk, but in, in public statements. It was a great opportunity to actually solidify it, intensify it. But yes, we are happy with saying that, oh, at least they're not saying anything adverse towards India. No, no, this will solidify Bharat Bhushan because this uh, rehabilitation and reconstruction work is going to take years. I'm, I'm going it to come to that. It is not the tragedy which is going to be resolved in yeah, in We're going to discuss time. that, but and, Ambassador Prasad. Uh, this will definitely solidify the relationship between two peoples. Okay. So. No, I think the demonstration of Indian goodwill at this hour of crisis for Nepal is extremely important because uh, you are alluding to Nepalese political forces that are inimical to close relations with India because in their imagination, the definition of Nepali nationalism is in opposition to India because they are overwhelmed by India's size, by India's presence in every walk of Nepali life. This assistance that India is extending to Nepal yes. is without any intention of seeking any return from it. So 
I basically, I disagree with the proposition that if we are assisting Nepal in this hour of crisis, we should expect anything in return from Nepal. That's not our intention to start with. I'm not saying you should expect something, but I'm saying here is an opportunity for Nepal to, uh, to actually show the potential of this relationship, at least sort of allude to it. That's not happening. I mean, all that DPT is saying that it will happen in the future. What do we do uh, in a situation like this? No, we look do, at our look at our crisis management units, how they are working. Yeah. Our senior officials on the second day, you see, our planes landed within seven hours of this earthquake. Uh, by six thirty, two aircraft were in Kathmandu, and then the following day, the senior Indian military officer was closeted with the Nepalese military yeah. officers yeah. planning a yeah. Nepal-wide thing. Yeah. And today. Again, there are senior officials, including mm. the foreign secretary in Kathmandu. Mm. There is a crisis management committee which the cabinet secretary of India presides over with 12 secretaries attending at 11 o'clock every morning and a smaller core group of five officers, the senior most public servants of India, get together at five in the evening every day to monitor mm. how we are doing and how we are coordinating okay. with the you want to say something? Uh, I just wanted to say I think it is uh, at this stage what the focus is on getting the maximum amount of assistance across. We, we still have reports about people buried under debris and we know that time is running out for them. So if we have to rescue those people, then that is the primary okay. focus. And politics and everything else becomes, is everything else is secondary okay. at this stage. Politics okay. is secondary okay. at this stage. Okay, that's very, very And important. that's how we are looking at it. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, we need to take a break again at this point. We'll be back again with this interesting discussion in a bit. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're discussing charity and geopolitics of earthquake relief in Nepal. DPD wanted to say something about the long-term perspective, what India ought to be doing in the long term. See, the long-term perspective, as I have said earlier, is going to take years. The entire reconstruction process is going to be long and uh, it will involve various forces. Another point which is very important in this connection is that at this crisis situation, India has welcomed aid and assistance from everywhere to Nepal. As many countries help Nepal in this hour of crisis is a point that our government has welcomed. Okay. United Nations is involved. They have given 1.5 crore dollars, they have said. European Union is there. United States and various other countries are there. Yeah. Therefore, you see, I, uh, for instance, I read just today, you must have read it. The people of Indian origin are collecting money for uh, relief and rescue operations in Nepal and sending their teams. One or two teams have already come from, 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 from other countries. Uh, from uh, from uh, people of Indian origin in the United States. Okay. okay. Uh, so, uh, these reports suggest <clears throat> that we will require various countries, various international organizations to help Nepal. And we should welcome it. We must welcome. We, okay. we are indeed welcoming it. Okay, Jay. Uh, so, uh, you know, in the long term, the two countries that will play a very important role in reconstruction of Nepal are China and India. Of course. As immediate neighbors. Yes. So, do you think at that point, when rehabilitation process begins, which may last 10 years or 15 years, do you think geopolitical wrangling between India and China might intensify? That it, it's not, if you're saying it's not there. So let's say, will it, will it be there at that point, you think? There is always the hope and expectations uh, among mischief makers in Nepal to bring India and China at loggerheads in Nepal. Why? But this has not happened actually. And this is a remarkable feat of diplomacy on the part of both India and Nepal because on Nepal, uh, the two countries have been more or less coordinated. Look at the moves that both India and China have taken towards the peace process, towards constitution making. They are moves in parallel. And the Indians and Chinese have a constructive attitude because Nepal has only two immediate neighbors, India and China. And Nepal has not been able to take advantage of the fact they are buffeted by two countries that are making rapid progress and Nepal's economy is going downhill, its per capita incomes are declining, and Nepal has such strategic assets. It has a natural endowment second to none in Asia. It has human resources second to none in Asia. They have to learn to take advantage of this. Using the two neighbors. Using the two neighbors. Okay. 
Rakesh, uh, rehabilitation will, of course, be a very expensive proposition. Estimates uh, vary. You know, they're, they're saying they're 10 billion, up to $10 billion over a long period of time. Now, you served in Afghanistan. India is the largest donor in Afghanistan. You know, we've committed uh, $2 billion uh, yeah. uh, to Afghanistan. And now here's Nepal, with which we share a border. We share cultural links, historical links. Uh, we have an open border. Uh, yeah. uh, we don't have these kind of links with Afghanistan. I'm not saying Afghanistan is any less important. But in the case of Nepal, do you think government of India should be uh, prepared to, to invest or to, 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 to donate uh, or to aid Nepal, you know, several times more than what it has been doing in Afghanistan? I, I don't know whether we should make comparisons between Afghanistan and Nepal. No, I'm making at this comparison stage, only in terms of money. Two billion dollars to Afghanistan. So, it, yes, does, does Nepal then deserve, say, six billion dollars or ten billion dollars? Over a period of time, I'm sure we will end up contributing hugely in Nepal's reconstruction. Yeah. I mean, just to take an example, you know, there was a devastating earthquake in 2010 in Haiti. Mm -hmm. 160,000 people died. In the immediate aftermath, we saw the breakout of cholera epidemics and so on, because the entire structures were devastated. The reconstruction of Haiti, which is much smaller, is still taking place today. And I think we need to learn from experiences, we need to plan accordingly, we need to make sure that the way we do the reconstruction in Nepal, because it is in a seismically active zone, is now going to be something which is going to be long term. Who would disagree with that? I'm merely saying that uh, are we prepared to be with Nepal in uh, in the long haul? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, good. Uh, 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 Jain, how do you think India's neighbors would view the, the rapidity, the swiftness of Indian response? Not only in terms of speed, but also in terms of mobilization of its armed forces. You know, even the Navy has sent a medical team, can you imagine? Um, uh, the, the, and, and the extent of their activity there, uh, would it would, would India's neighbors see this positively or negatively? Because you know the the, the mobilization that takes place for disaster relief, similar uh, mobilization, same swiftness can be shown in other cases. I only need to refer to 1988 when uh, Indian armed forces prevented a coup uh, by flying down in you know in a few hours to Maldives. So would this make India's neighbors? Uh, appreciate India or would they hedge uh, by balancing India with other countries? No, I think uh, it is a net gain for the region. This is not the first time that we have responded promptly. Do you remember the tsunami had struck in the morning hours? By evening, there were Indian yeah. naval teams yeah. already in Colombo. Yeah. Yeah. And the next day, there were three Indian ships that had already docked with relief supplies yeah. in uh, Sri Lankan harbors. So this is something that we have done repeatedly uh, an earthquake had struck Nepal also, a very minor earthquake in contrast to this, in late autumn of 2011. I was then in Kathmandu. Sikkim was very badly hit at that time, you, re you might recall. There again, our response was very swift. So this is going to be a net gain for everyone. And we have the Disaster Management Center for SARC located in Delhi. This is an opportunity India sees of activating it by pulling everybody together as a team player uh, and as a builder of regional cooperation focused on disaster management. This is something which is also coming out as a yeah. lesson from this exercise. Rakesh, would you like to add something to that? Do you no, agree I think I agree with Jan. So far, the <coughs> SAR Disaster Management Center hasn't gotten off the ground because of the fact that some ratifications have been pending and so on. But uh, if this can act as a spur, then I think um, the fact that it is also located in Delhi, I think, is a great asset which should be made use of in the region. And I can tell you one thing that, God forbid, tomorrow if there is another uh, disaster in any of our neighboring countries, the eyes will naturally turn to India as the primary resource from where assistance will flow. As we know today, we are making use of the <coughs> land bridge. I mean, had the earthquake damaged the airport in Kathmandu, all, all the access would have been on the, through the roads, yeah. through India. Yeah. And that yeah. is a given for all of India's neighbours. Okay. TPT, any last remarks? No, my last remarks are that this would actually uh, <coughs> uh, strengthen the disaster management network in the SARC countries. And this will indeed uh, increase cooperation between all countries. And there will be, as Ambassador Sood has said, high expectations uh, from India 
uh, for help in the crisis situations like so this. So something good may come out of this disaster. Uh, Ambassador My Jain Prasad. My last thought, Bharat, is uh, that the people-to-people -people connectivity between India and Nepal, which is critical to our relationship, that is going to now come into play as the relief and rehabilitation process starts. Because right now we were involved in immediate emergency uh, support, extrication of people, bodies, exhuming them, uh, burying them, cremating them, uh, reaching medicines and food and water. But in the next phase, and this is the strength of India and Nepal. So besides everything else that government of India would do, and I agree with you that we need to step up our game uh, in Nepal, uh, not in contrast to what we do in uh, Afghanistan or in comparison to it, but independently of it, because our stakes with yeah. Nepal are huge, our people-to-people -people connectivity is huge. That's very well put. Uh, with that, we've really run out of time, so I'd like to thank all of you, Ambassador Jain Prasad, Mr. D.P. Tripathi, Ambassador Rakesh Sood for coming here and participating in this, this discussion. You're great friends of Nepal, and I hope you'll continue to argue for improving India-Nepal ties in the future also. That's all we have for you today. We'll be back again next week as usual. Till then, goodbye, and thanks for watching India's work.